on with the first car and very very happy at this point in in the video so audi q2 s line i want to say automatic very very nice car the driver's just bought this one out and it's a 2019 unrecorded um, stolen recovered minimal damage on this one and i'm going to be honest this is the first one ever in my life I'm going to go in that office and I'm going to demand a full refund. This was nearly £8,000, this car, and look inside it. It has clearly been submerged in water. Look at the back of it. And it stinks in here to high heaven. It has been right up and over them seats. This car has been underwater, which is horrendous. I'm going to get in now and I'm not leaving until they take this off and give me my money back. They come out, they assessed it and said, you're absolutely right, this car is flood damaged and we are going to take it back, Rob. It is not as described. You can't argue with that. It stinks in there. I'm not happy because I really wanted this car and we paid nearly £9,000 for this car, 8700 In fact, I'll stick the little post up now in case I am wrong. Because I've bought two expensive cars. They're going to bring the other one out now and swap it over. But I was quite excited about this one. Unrecorded, vandalised, I thought, yep, definitely this is going to be all right. And then you open it up and it's got that inside it. I mean, that is horrendous, isn't it? But they did say they only go by what the insurance company say. And it weren't until I got here, it says on there, mould, flood. You can't, you can't see these in a photo though, and I'm not exaggerating, you cannot see those in a photo. Right, let's get it unloaded and get the next one on. So off with the absolute pile of scrap, the Audi Q2, and then straight on with the next purchase, which also is a very, very expensive one, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. So this one is a BMW X1 S line, very, very nice car, and the latest shape BMW that they actually do. The forklift driver loaded that on for me, the same guy that took the other one off. We get that strapped down, get on the road, get back and show Chris. So, genuinely, Genuinely, we're not going to go on about that Audi anymore. I've explained the situation to Chris. It is very, very unfortunate, but I think they've stood by their word. They come straight out, they've took it off, they're giving us a full refund. That's not what we wanted. We wanted no. to keep that car. No. And just before I even show you this car, I was so angry, there's another word I want to use. I was so angry that when they loaded this car on, I actually found a problem with this as well. And I didn't even bother going in the office and mentioning it. Jump up. It's got three wheels, is that the No, board? no, 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 it's worse than that. Is Jump it? up. Right. Yeah, I'll take the camera. The same about the bonnet's all marked up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but the bonnet wasn't like that, was it? And now look, a little further. Oh, I can see, mate. That is a truck driver. I don't know if it was a co-part one or when it was collected, but they've lowered the top deck onto the and i noticed it and i thought i'm not going in because they've just unloaded this as well and uh, where'd you go where'd it's a shame you, isn't it it is a shame because that's a load of work now that we wasn't expecting and of course this is a 2022 and the model is u11 it is the latest shape bmw out at the moment x1 and it is beautiful Nice looking car, shall I pass it, this yeah, back? Chris, honestly, it is stunning. So if you want to go have a little look at the obvious, actually. Yeah, I was just looking there. It looks like the, um, it's popped, it's clean off the um, it, wishbone, hasn't it? And the yeah. drive shaft's popped straight out. Yeah. So. There's going to be some broken pipes yeah. and wires, isn't there? Yeah, but we, we'll, um, not like mega, not mega no. bad damage. And I can see there is a little bit behind now. Yeah. But that, again, doesn't look too bad. Then... We're going to have fun getting it off the truck, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, well, mate, the other thing is, is with this... Now, I think, mate. No, go on. The other thing is, with this, it was listed as Category S, but it's actually stolen recovered. 
few old that I'll jump up and I'll show why I know that. Of course I've had a little nosy in here. And do you know why I had a nosy in here as soon as I was down Copart and they oh, put it on? Because oh. this hasn't got any keys with it. I think no, I told you that. Did, yeah. So I had, a, speeding, yeah. I had a mooch through here to see if it had any keys. But I don't know if you guys can just about make that out. That is all forensic dust. And then there, you can see there, is all forensic dust. And I actually see a book in here somewhere. I right. think my theory is... Chris, this I'm was... I'm going to come around the other yeah. side. The uh, door won't open. Oh, will it not? No, it's taped shut. Oh, yeah. And Because the window's broken. Yeah. But my theory is... He's coming back now. My theory is, Chris, this was stolen from a dealership or on a test drive. Right. Is that back door open? Yeah, I suppose it could be, couldn't but it? Look, look again. What, and then they've crashed it, you reckon? Can we, can we get the negatives over, <laughs> out of the way, honestly? Can we, um, can we get the negatives over and done with now? Go on. Is it that one? What, what am I looking at, mate? It's been sliced open. I don't think it has. No, don't look like it. Oh, that one there, look. They've chopped it all out. Have they? Cut the airbag and cut the steering wheel one as well. So it can't be reloaded. Which is, re they, they can't be reloaded. So it right. looks like the passenger one is going to be all right. Sorry, mate, let me jump down yeah, here. Yeah, just having a look. So, oh, I see, there's a load of stuff in the back. Yeah, the wheel yeah. and the leg yeah, looks okay, like it's yeah, in the back. Yeah. Lovely bit of trim, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Feel how soft it is. Yeah, that is nice, isn't it? That is nice. Yeah. Shall I walk round the other side while you're yeah, having a look? Or... Yeah, So, look how trick that looks. Mm. It's proper nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that again, shame. It's going to want a lot of paintwork. But yeah. S-Drive, so it is only a two-wheel drive. 1800 diesel, not a hybrid, nothing, it is just a diesel. And has that scraped passing or has that been on its side? That's been over, isn't it? I would say that slid on its side, hasn't it? Briefly gone back on its feet, I don't know. It just that is a proper gravel rash, isn't it? It is isn't gravel it? rash, isn't it? That's the only thing, Chris, like with the broken window, half the windows are down and no key, we can't get the windows done up. So moving on here, it looks mm. lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean... I've pulled the bonnet, because I was going to try and chuck a jump pack on it and get the windows up, that ain't going to work. Is that the only damage on oh, the sorry, bumper? Sorry, your mic's upside down, mate. Is, it, is that the only damage on the bumper? Yeah, that bit there, and there's a little tiny bit mm. on the back bumper, but the headlights are untouched, all the front ends untouched. And that is just that wheel arch there, so... Right. That ain't going to stay there, I don't think. Should be all right. Yeah, I don't know how much we can see on the back of the truck, oh. but you can see... Yeah, it's got it, scuffed, that's all. Yeah, it is stuck on so the back of the truck. that's repairable, isn't it? Yeah. That's good. Well, what's the plan? We're going to have to find some suspension, I think, Rob, because we, we could end up doing more damage. Trying to unload it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's quite a big car, isn't it? I'm... Yeah, I'm going to say it again, because I wish I could switch this camera around, you know, when I'm talking to you and then talking to me. Yeah. I know from previous experience, I'll get you to hold that, Chris, that BMW, I'm going to say it, just because it's a bit of a tip for everyone, you know that when we get a car, we're no key, we're straight on the phone to Aiden and we get him out. But I know, because I used to do only minis, that's all I ever used to do. And then throughout the years, I bought other BMWs. BMW is the only manufacturer you can ring up, obviously with the paperwork, and order a key. And when that key arrives, it's already programmed to the car. You're ready to fire it up. So I reckon get straight on the phone to Drew, get a key ordered up for it, and get that suspension. I'll go for all the stuff in the boot, yeah. see what we need, yeah. get it all ordered up so that we've got a key, and then we can get it off the back of the truck. Yeah. Do that. Sounds like a plan, Let's mate. get on the phone, see if he can get it overnighted to us. Yeah. I don't know where you're going to find that suspension, though. I'm going to have to buy it new. We'll get a price on it. It's going to be... Uh, mate, all we can do is our best. I'll see the drive shafts in the back, and you know as well, some of these bits, they'll be for other model cars. Uh, Even yeah. though it's the newest model. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be for other models, aren't they? Well, let's hope so. Right. All then, right, mate. Let me get on the phone. 
So, of course, there's not going to be a great deal of information available for this one, being a late 2272 reg vehicle. So, odometer there clearly highlighted with a green tick. Financial, exactly the same. And damage clearly highlighted there with that amber triangle. On this check, you've got things to know about your BMW X1 2022. And on every car, this will come up and give you various bits of information regarding that car. So when you're buying your car, it's just more and more research and things you can find out. This check was checked in 900 plus different data sources in 35 different countries. And Car Vertical are partnered with DVLA fueling this report. So theft marker all okay there. Police database, stolen vehicle check completed in five different countries. And that's all come back okay. Rodometer, there is only going to be one input there. And that is literally your delivery mileage where this is far too new. But going down to the damage section, you can see this vehicle was marked as an insurance write-off. And a little bit further down, you can see on December 2023, this vehicle was reported as damaged category s repairable structural damage also you've got down the bottom here your average price for such a vehicle so 39,346 you can see this vehicle is a high value vehicle and it does it is going to need a lot of parts and a lot of work I do want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on these must-do checks when you're purchasing your vehicle. To you get a nice little discount off your check, use the code up on screen now or hit that link in the description where it will automatically apply your discount. All right, a good few days later and we have had some luck with this and some stuff that's not so lucky that we've just come across, which is the bane of our lives. Mm. No locking wheel nut key. Mm. So Chris has got to crack on with it, which is a shame because we need it now. We could have ordered a key and saved that, but we haven't got time. We've opened the bonnet. We've got the jump pack on there. The key has arrived. We should add that wheel is toast though. Oh yeah, the wheel so is. It's not a major drama. The wheel is absolutely knackered. But we've managed to get a complete leg off of eBay. Apart from caliper. Apart from a so caliper. We need the caliper. Yeah. But uh, that's it, I think. But we've managed to get the leg with the yeah, hub, yeah. wheel bearing, drive shaft, yeah. all of it. And do you know what? Let's just roll with that. 675 quid, second hand, but probably would have been twice the price. Well, it was, yes. And it was the only one available in the world, not the mm. country. Mm. This is a model U11, and the yeah. parts are just not available yeah. yet. So the key has arrived. I've chucked the battery on charge. It is taking a charge. I am going to do the sequence on this in a minute because this, like I said, already come programmed, but it does need programming for the remote to work. But already, as soon as we put a jump pack on, the electronic boot has started working and the ignition in the car has all come on. Well, I'll say the ignition's come on. I think just the display is all lit up there, you can see. I don't think that's actually the ignition on yet, unless it is on and there was a key in, hidden inside here somewhere, but I doubt that very much. Chris has just asked me to go and find him an alloy wheel because I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I've been concentrating so much yeah. on getting everything, yeah. that completely slipped my mind. And we have got space savers, numerous space savers, five stud, spare BMW five stud wheels don't fit. So if Gunny are watching, we'd appreciate a set of gunny wheels. Be very useful. Very, very useful. Right, let's go and get your wheel, mate, and let you strip that yep. out. Yeah, right, mate. So straight on here, trying to save some of these parts. I think we're gonna be saving the disc, the caliper. There may be some other parts on here that we can use, but I think the drive shaft, toast, the wheel bearing, we're not gonna to wanna to use again. Obviously, it's been knocked off so hard, it's wrecked the wheel and it's of course wrecked that bearing the hubbers and the knuckles also snapped as well so we'll let chris strip that off and we'll move on right moving along nicely i have topped up the brake fluid so i have to take just this little scuttle panel out still got the battery on charge and kaylee at barrett's where we get the bits has just talked me through programming this key in and I wanted her attempt to actually program it in. You have to start it. So she said, put your foot, I know this is going to sound, put your foot on the brake and hold down the start button. And even after it starts, keep holding it until the, for 10 seconds. And then that will program the key. 
the car didn't start, the, jump, the battery's not charged enough, but it was enough to program the key because it's now working and it did turn over. Then you hold that again. And that shuts it. So now that is working, why that's on charge, I'm gonna take this crash wrap off, get these back windows shut and get the windows shut the other side, just make sure they work. And then once it's got some charge in it, I'm gonna to attempt to start it up. But that's the strut, the leg, everything all bolted on there. The drop link and loads of other little bits and pieces are gonna to come tomorrow, but that's the drive shaft in there. All of the damage removed. We were struggling for a wheel, but luckily Reclamet are actually on their way. They're gonna lend us a wheel until we can get one arranged for it. Key's all programmed. You see it? Yeah. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, you meant to have to start it, but I managed to, where I was firing it over, it actually took to the key and it opens a boot, but I'm just gonna give it another charge. And because it's got the shaft in, I know we've got to top it out of oil. I'm gonna send it and see if it starts. Nice yeah. Too. And also, if it don't, I'm gonna plug it in and see what crash data it's got because all the bags are gone and I'm gonna shut the windows. Sorry, I'm repeating myself here because no, I've just filmed right. it all. Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. So I know a lot of you are gonna think you're crazy. Why are you vacuuming it out? It's the last thing you need to be doing, but this is a brand new car. The seats are covered in glass and I don't wanna sit on the glass and end up, number one, getting it stuck in my butt bottom or ripping the seats. You don't wanna rip these seats. They're a nice soft leather and of course, new. I don't wanna be replacing anything. We don't need to replace our quick vacuum out. Right, the Alltel would not read this car so I had to get the launch out and it literally had, had 60 codes. I've cleared them down and the ones that come back here, diagnosis, feedback, electric fuel pump module, but going straight down, I'm not even gonna bother reading for all these, crash safety mode. So it has actually got a crash shut off mode and I'm not gonna be able to do anything. Hopefully, let me just shut this door so that we can see a bit better the chair forward so I can reach. Hopefully you can see there, that's good news because we didn't know the mileage. 14,331. And when I crank, it's cranking. But it's not gonna start, is it? Because it's got no fuel pump. Reclamet will be here shortly with the wheel. And my only other problem is how do we get this car in to neutral? Because we're going to need to, aren't we? Let's try and work that out, do a bit of research. But it doesn't look like we're going to get it started at the moment until that crash date is cleared. And I don't think that computer is capable of clearing the crash data. I need to speak to Drew and then possibly get Juris out here, the guy we had out for the M4. Let's see how we get on. We finally managed to get this one off the back of the truck late late yesterday and it was desperately needing to come off because of course i had to drop that one series over for paint and that needed to go on the truck but you can have a proper look at the front end now and the more i look around this car the more marks and dinks there is of course we're not going to be negative about it but i've just noticed that little chin there in the bonnet i mean easy repairable for chris but it's still another piece of work that's got to be done isn't it we, in the end, the wheel reclamate bolt down. Unfortunately, that didn't fit. So you can see what we actually did was hit the damage into the wheel so that it wasn't disrupting anything, wasn't uh, failing anything. And then managed to put that wheel on and roll it off the truck. I did manage to get it into um, neutral and also managed to get the handbrake off. Now, again, I know that I, I, I'd like to show as much as I possibly can but you all watched me recently do the X3 roof lining. And as you can see on the back of that truck, well, I've just removed it without filming it. And it was actually very, very simple to do. And that was purely down to the fact that I um, already did one last week, didn't I? So not that bad to do at all. That's also gonna aid getting rid of that bit of damage in the roof up there. You can see now, you can clearly see it in there. There's no damage to the inner structure. It is just that section there. So Chris will, Chris will get in there when he and give that a... Oh, there you go. I won't... Um, I'm not going to touch that anymore because I may end up causing 
more damage to it. And Chris said, Chris will say to me, you should have left it, but it looks like now there's just a little one there, there, and a dip in there, but he'll get that out, won't he? He'll get 99% of that out. Right, the method in my madness, getting that roof lining out. What I've actually decided to do is, because I say I, we, we've just had a bit of a chat about it, and if we get Duras out here to do the crash data, are we wasting our money because the airbag light's still going to be on? It's false economy, isn't it? So, I've decided I'm going to strip these seat belts out and the airbags and actually get these sent out straight away and get them repaired, get them put back in the car, and then that way, once he does clear the codes, it's going to clear all those down as well. But I do need to find a right-hand airbag. I'll say that one's been cut. Anyway, enough waffle. I know it seems like there's been a bit in this, but... You can't make an omelette, guys, without breaking a few eggs, can you? Let's carry on. So, of course, I recently did this on the X3, so I knew exactly what I was doing. It was identical to do, apart from I took the roof lining right out of this. And you see, I made very short work of getting those curtain airbags out. Straight on, you had three little eight mil nuts here, holding those side panels on, but each side. And I undone them and straight out with that driver side rear seat belt. Exactly the same, straight out with the passenger side rear seat belt. Move round, do the passenger side front seat belt. You've got your three star drives on there, and that's out. And exactly the same on the driver's side. So while Chris was cracking on in the uh, workshop there, I've just asked him to come out and have a look at this because it's the first one we've ever seen. And I weren't actually going to get that carried away because I knew that we needed a new dash, needed a new steering wear bag, and of course all the others can be reset. And I was right, earlier in this video I said, Chris would tell me off for of popping that dent out, and he come out and went, leave that for now. Yeah. So yeah, little little telling off there. No, um, It's all back there as well, isn't it? Is it? Look. Yeah. Oh, man. Nasty, that, isn't it? But it's nice to have that roof lining out. You'll you'll get rid of a lot of that, won't yeah. you? Yeah. Which is nice because, it, it, yeah. Anyway, dash top. I've took loads of screws out of like even these vents, and I didn't need to. Right. A lot of them could have stayed in. That screen. As soon as I pulled that trim off, it exposed three screws. You undone the screws, right. and the trim come out. But look at this. Apart from that one screw, which goes. Yeah. Up there. I'm yeah. going to put it up there. Have a look at that and tell me what you notice. All the same, aren't Every they? single one of them. That, no, you? you cannot go wrong. Every single screw I took out, including the cowling, everything was exactly the same length, same That's size. Idiot proof. It is definitely, definitely, mate. Right. Let's go to the back. I want to show you this um, dash pad. Yeah. Can I get you to Quite a good that? idea, really. Yeah, isn't it's it? a really good idea. And genuinely, look, you got one in there, yep. one in there, and the same the other end. And then you can see there is one, two, yep. three, four. Yeah. yeah that is good, all that holds that in. And look, which is lovely, isn't it? I mean, they, they must have finally started listening. Yeah. That, that's good. Yeah. So that. Both that's um, obviously that's toast. Got four seat belts there that are all going off to be repaired. I'm sending them that just so that they can get a match for us and get us one of those. Yes. This curtain airbag, yeah, is this one. Look how big they are, Chris, once they go off. Look. Yeah. That one is actually going to stand back a bit there, mate. That's going to be reset. Yeah. Right, we're going to get that reloaded. This one that they cut. I actually found it while I was taking it out. Let's actually uh, just throw that out for a minute. So the bits that they cut off, which is a crying shame, isn't it? Look. That's crazy, isn't it? They've got a knife and cut that out and probably cost 250 yeah. quid. Shame, isn't it? For what? It's, I mean, there is a little bit ripped off there as well. Oh, actually, no, that's not cut, is it? So there's a little bit ripped off there, and they've cut that bit off there, which is... Well, it is what it is, mate. It is what it is, but I think, on that note, we're going to leave it there. There's well, it's no... going to be a few days I now, said it'd isn't be... it? Yeah, what I started this off, it would be false economy to get the crash data cleared by that guy 
for him to come back after I've put all the airbags in yeah. and go through it all again. So unfortunately, that is going to be the end of today's video. If you did enjoy it, we would appreciate that thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. And of course, it's free of charge. If you want to follow us on Instagram, it's Selfridge Rebuilds. If you want to follow Chris on his boot fair jollies and doing stuff around the farm, it's Selfridge Rebuilds Chris. Like, subscribe and share. And we'll look forward to seeing you all very, very soon in the next one.